Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, thank you, Carolyn. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's it's one a.m. So I'm I'm I, I might be a little bit tired. I, I, uh, you, you're uh, it's not Vietnam, right? You're from where are you studying? Uh, in Laos. Laos, that's right. Yeah. Laos. Well, thanks for staying up, Caroline. Yeah, I didn't want to miss it. Well, great. Uh, maybe I should start with you know who I am and what I do. <laughs> you can start with that. So most of you guys already know, except for Sheldon. Um, so I'm an exercise physiologist and kinesiologist, and I created the Walla Method about 2014. I started teaching it in 2015. It's been interesting because we've been able to help people with physical this issues, is Sheldon. This is my wife, Lynch. emotional Shh. issues, and spiritual yeah. issues. And with Caroline, uh, we were able to help her dog. Uh, when she was in India, so it's almost like where's Waldo with Caroline? Yeah. <laughs> so I have another practitioner with me, Kevin. He's been doing voila for about seven, probably. So uh, what we thought about doing is what we were going to originally do is, is take uh, team you up with a, a different practitioner, and then they would work you through a sample session. Um. But it worked out. It was just Kevin and I, so we're we're just gonna work on people and kind of show you how it's done. Okay. Uh, is there anyone that would like to volunteer? Would anyone like to volunteer? Sure. Oh, right here. <laughs> okay. And, uh, we got Caroline. Caroline, what's something you would like to address? Uh. Well, one of the, well, mostly what I was thinking about and today while I was um, doing some workouts, I try to do a lot of ballet workouts. And one of the things that's hindering me from moving forward, and nobody can quite give me uh, an answer as to why I'm having this issue, but um, I don't know how to explain it. But when I'm not able to sit up, fully upright like when i'm sitting down okay. with my legs in front of me my i'm always getting yelled at for like leaning back because i can't keep my back and everything aligned the only way i can gotcha. do that is if i'm sitting against a wall mm -hmm. and i don't know like if that's like a hip issue or a back issue or a, okay. i don't know what the issue is and um I don't like to assume things, but um, since you do ballet, I'm going to think that you have some flexibility. <laughs> I'm like the least flexible person ever, but I'm like okay. pushing really hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we're going to work on is her feet are out straight. Is that correct, Caroline? Right. And then yep. you're leaning forward, kind of touch your toes, right? I'm just oh, not okay. able to, my back wants to like shrimp. It doesn't want to stay like flat back. Perfect. So this is a great example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through my voila assessment, but I'm just not going to uh, say it out loud, but I'll tell you what my results are and what I find. So I have both SI joints off and I have her SBJ off, which is a small joint or bone two sets of bones, the sphenoid and the occiput inside your head. And it opens and it closes. This is what's supposed to happen. But on most people, it's not happening properly, and this is why they have issues. So what's really interesting with her, you have what we would call a yin-yang. You have something at the top and something at the bottom of the spine. right? So that would mm -hmm. be a yin-yang. And... What's affecting both your SI joints is your head. So okay. if your SI joints are having to lock up for some reason, and we'll, we can find out why, uh, because your head's not feeling safe. Okay. Okay. So we have to make these corrections to these bones in her head, and uh, no wonder you're having trouble. Wow. Okay. <laughs> 
So Kevin, she has a horizontal shear and a vertical shear at the same time. Okay. This is what I call it BFD. A big fucking deal. <laughs> so what we have to do with Caroline is take her sphenoid, which is right here behind the eyes. It's a little divot. We have to push that forward and then move her occiput to the right. So okay. Caroline, I'm going to talk you through this, okay? All right. I'm going to set your set my camera down here. Okay. So what's really interesting with this one is the left side is going to go forward on inhale. The right side is going to go forward on exhale. So it's going to what I call this like an itsy bitsy spider. We're going to walk it <laughs> forward. So Carolyn, it probably be best maybe to put your uh, maybe uh, whatever finger you feel comfortable. Can you with also see the difference or, in, in the shape of her eyes? And then put your thumbs on the back of your head. And when we inhale, I want you to take your left hand. As you inhale, move that forward. And as you exhale, I want you to take the right side forward and gently take your left thumb to the right. Don't let go of that pressure. Maintain that pressure as you inhale, left side forward. Right, left side. Forward toward me. Yeah. And then as you exhale, bring the right hand toward me and your left thumb to the right. Carolyn, inhale, uh, left hand toward me. <laughs> you see how your uh, left hand went backward? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so raise your hand. Which is your left? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And they're both this is a very common thing as well is we, we call it a disorientation. When something is off, you you won't know where you're right from your left. It's very I common. So that was my mistake <laughs> in telling you to move your left hand forward. So let's see how you did. You did pretty good. We just still have this right uh, sphenoid didn't move. But now so it's something different. Now it's her right sphenoid with her parietal bone, which is over here. Your parietal bone needs to go backward and your sphenoid needs to go forward. So place your four fingers on the side of your head and your thumb right there behind your eye. Yeah, be nice. I want you to take your other hand, Caroline, and, and, and hold your entire head. On inhale this time, I want you to bring your thumb forward and your parietal backward. So as you inhale, your thumb is going to come toward me and your fingers are going to go to the back of the room. Try not to turn your head. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. You got it. Good job. Woo. What, do you, what do you notice, Caroline? My neck released. <laughs> Your neck released. Yeah. I felt my hips release. <laughs> yeah. Can you go ahead and put your legs out in front of us and see how how you do? Yeah, let me see if I can put down over there. Oh my god, wow, yeah. I've never been able to sit upright. I don't know. Oh, look at that. Your back is perfectly straight. Yeah. No. Nope. And how about can you Yeah, how about your uh your can you reach out for your toe touch and so let's just see if anything happens when you're back? I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh my god, I never thought I would ever be able to do this because it's been months and months of stretching and foam rolling and um, they're just like it's it might just be like a a physical issue that like 
with your bones and you'll never be able to do it. But I, this is a straight. Well, they're partly seven. right. It was a physical condition with your bones, but it was the bones in your head. <laughs> Not my hips at all. Oh my God. That's so amazing. I'm just blown yeah. away. So, and, wow. you know, Kevin and I, we hear these stories all the time. Oh, there's nothing you can do or you have to, you know, foam roll and all this. And this is why I'm not into foam rolling at all because it doesn't, doesn't help the issue. It, especially in your case, it wouldn't have, have helped at all. You could, well, you already have foam, ro foam rolled until the moon turned blue. It doesn't help. Right. So this is how we're able to help people so quickly and so fast by going to the origin of, of the cause to find out why the body's not doing what we want it to do and then find out the reason why. So Caroline, since this is, a, a, as, as Kevin knows, and as I said, it's a BFD, did you ever hit your head or a car accident or? Um, yeah, I had a bad car accident when I was 18, which was, um, along, I guess, 22 years ago. Um, uh -huh. and my, I just remember the fire chief called the next day to see how I was doing. And he's like, you left lipstick on your chest. So I guess. Oh, I, wow. And he's like, wow. we were really surprised that you were okay. And like, I had really bad issues for quite a while, but, mm -hmm. um, worked through a lot of them but i think that's always going to have like a residual you know effect it's been so many years but i think well it, if you want to at some point we we can work on it because it's going to bring up a whole lot of emotional kind of aspects yeah. <laughs> to that but that that makes sense to why this phenoid had to go forward because it got pushed backward yeah by the way joel and Carolyn, I don't know if you noticed, but Carolyn's left eye was significantly smaller in mm -hmm. terms of opening. It's not that way anymore. Oh, I'm going to look in the mirror. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm talking about, right, Carolyn? Yeah, they look much more even. Wow. Yeah. yeah. My husband's I'm not looking... going to recognize you, Car <laughs> Caroline, in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, he's asleep right now. He's like, uh, yeah, he was, when he, he wakes up, he's not going to recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such an amazing change. Oh, so yeah. amazing. I love it. Because the sphenoid houses the eyes. That's where your eye sockets are, are in this butterfly type bone. And I don't have it sitting here with me. So, and that's one of the things that uh, Kevin and I look at is. The, the is one eye bigger than the other or also is one in front of the other is one higher than the other those are all kind of things that we can look at and you can change pretty quickly as you just found out caroline yeah i was so aggravated trying to do makeup and like like one eye would be fine and i can never get I'm like what's going on with my eyes <laughs> it's true the left eye was just too it was much smaller it didn't it didn't make sense but i was always trying to fix it with like eyeliner and right <laughs> right well we'll see how your makeup yeah. is uh next time you do it yeah it's all our cosmetics it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the reason i'm not showing you the assessment that i do because that's proprietary information that i teach in my classes um it's very quick um i don't know i probably assess caroline in 10 seconds and within 15, we were already starting to work. That's how quickly this stuff works. That's right. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and, but it, what's interesting, though, uh, what we have found out is no one believes it. <laughs> no one believes you can make a correction to somebody that fast. Because doctors or PTs or whatever are like, oh, it took a long time to get this injury. It's going to take you a long time to correct it. And it's total bullshit. It's because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know where to look. Oh, don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's one of my problems. I'm too direct sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's what you believe is what you see.
Not what you see is what you believe. Yeah. So we're not we're not stuck with those beliefs that you're you're in one way and you're and you're just going to keep on going down that line. No. There's just so much capacity for change and 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 recovery. And that's why as a practitioner we have to be a blank slate. We yeah. can't bring our belief into what we think is going on. You have to we have to allow and this is the hard part for some of the practitioners is to trust that I created something that works, but also trust the process. Like well, I have, I have to trust the Walla method myself. There you go. And the thing is that we have a, we have an ego that wants to be in control and wants to say, we learned this, we did this, we, and, and like in, in other formats that I've had, I've had to, I've had to say, oh shit, I'm not going to be able to be Mr. Fancy Pants here. It's just whatever is in front of me. And, mm -hmm. you know, parking your ego at the door. Yeah, your ego can't be involved. Otherwise, we'd be playing with uh, Caroline's SI joints and trying to jam them into where they wanted to go. <laughs> so I went back and reassessed Caroline as we're talking. And so I can assess as I'm talking. And her SI joints now are balanced. Yeah. That's so amazing. Pretty cool, <laughs> huh? Wow, that I was a perfect uh, demonstration there, and you did a really good job of um, listening and following the directions of the correct. Yeah, that was, that's a pretty complicated uh, uh, set of movements to do. That really was. That really yeah. was. But I love that. You know, oh, it's my it's my SI joints. I can't bend. I can't do this. I, no, it's your cranials. Yeah. In this case, it happened to be your cranials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>